Welcome back to uh, the program. The blue ribbon of the four internationals is the Hong Kong Cup, $25 million in prize money. And another defending champion will carry saddlecloth number one in Designs on Rome. He will indeed, and he's got a very good chance of following up Free Eagle. He's a really terrific import uh, from Europe. Then we have Blazing Speed, Criterion, who ran well in the race last year. Military Attack, who also ran well in the race last year. Dan Excel and Staffanus, one of the uh, Japanese contingents. And then we move on to Galo Shop for Antoine de Watrigon. And then we have Satono Aladdin, Beauty Only, Ashin Hikari, who's a definite pace angle, Freeport Lux, Lucia Valentina for the Australians, and Nuovo Record for the Japanese. Yes, as we know, it's a short run to the first bend over the 2,000 metres here at Chartin. Uh, now, Criterion, uh, it was an awkward marble for him at the barrier draw this morning when gate number 13 came out. Ashin Hikari is a front-running type, military attack, blazing speed of both drawn perfectly. Dan Excel is a chance of being caught a little bit wide. We saw Galo Shop, of course, lead basically throughout in the McKinnon Stakes. So, again, there looks to be a fair bit of pace. Uh, Sally Ann, barrier nine for Free Eagle. How did you assess that situation? I don't think that would be a problem for him uh, over this trip. He's such a talented horse. He's, he's a horse that I tipped an awful lot for the for the arc this year. I was a bit disappointed with how he ran, but I think he's he's really talented. I think he's the one to watch in this race. All right, well, let's go back and uh, refresh your minds on what happened last year in this race with Criterion up outside of the lead. Blazing Speed was there, if good enough. Military Attack, of course, he came sweeping down the middle with Designs on Rome. Now, Designs on Rome has just had the one run back from... Uh, his performance in the QE2 Cup where he was fourth, he's had some some surgery in the off-season, but the lead-up, John, was terrific. Yeah, I was very impressed with the run of the Jockey Club. Miley actually came home faster than Abel Friend in that race, yes. so that's uh, something to uh, to take on board. There's a great duel between them uh, here, uh, of course, Designs on Rome and Military Attack. Military Attack gets gate one on Sunday, which is a, a big plus for him. Designs on Rome gets gate six, which is no bad gate either, so two horses that have got a good chance of repeating on what we saw there. Only one horse has won the Cup on two occasions, the little Bonnie Gray, California memory. Can Designs on Rome make it back-to-back? -back? Hear again from John Moore. Well, the jury's out. Um, we, I would have loved to have had another run in under his belt. Uh, we had to go straight in the mile. He, he, he ran really, really well. He closed off uh, in 21 8, even quicker than uh, Abel Friend. Um, but you've always got to think that that run may have taken the, the top off him and he may go into this race uh, with the, again, the second run syndrome. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case as he's all heart and he knows how to find the line. Who's the main danger? Who's the one you've got to beat in that? Um, well, you can't get away from military attack but uh, because he's drawn gate one and he's, he's, uh, he's all heart. But I would think Dermot Weld's horse there would be the one to beat Free Eagle. Well, he is a maestro, there's no doubt about that. Dermot World knows how to win an international group one uh, all over the, uh, the world and a Free Eagle is the horse in his stable. Let's go back and have a look at the performance of Free Eagle in the Prince of Wales Stakes. Criterion was in this race as well, down on the rail. Galo Shop uh, also and um, a Canic Chase, who obviously runs in the Vars, had a bit of a bumping duel with Spielberg, but Free Eagle moved up, just started to lengthen. Quality, quality, quality. I really was impressed with this run. He just he did it so easily. It was all so natural. I think you can ignore Criterion. The trip to, to England didn't really suit him. It, it wasn't his day. Canic Chase, I, I have a problem with deciding if he's a Group 1 horse. I don't think he, he really is yet. He might be in, in the future. But Free Eagle, for me, he just makes it look so easy. John? Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, he's definitely a horse that uh, is going to take plenty of beating. I'm a bit like Sally. I'm not that worried about the barrier draw. I think sometimes we can overcomplicate things. I think if a horse mm. is a good bit better than the rest, uh, he, can, uh, he can be drawn virtually anywhere, and I think uh, he's going to be very tough to beat. Yeah, I agree. It's hard to leave him out of the tips, that's for sure. But it is a race that, uh, that just oozes quality. Stefanos has, of course, already been to Hong Kong in the past. He ran a, a terrific race in uh, the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup back in April when he finished second behind blazing speed since then he's gone back to Japan I thought he's run in the Tenno show behind lovely day who for me is probably the best horse going around in Japan at the moment outstanding he covered an enormous amount of ground and uh, he's coming into the race cherry ripe. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, necessarily put you off him if you fancy this horse. I just think that uh, he's possibly not yet achieved the level of form that Free Eagle has. Uh, but this was, uh, this was encouraging stuff, um, but no, not, not for me. He's not quite in the numbers for me.
What about you, Sally Ann? No, I completely agree. I was watching that race and just doesn't impress me to the to the point of free eagle. He's just not at that point. Okay, well uh, I'm against you here. I think he is at that <laughs> point. Let's see what Goda thinks on the Stefanos and Co. In the Cup Nahiro, uh, Japan has got a number of chances in the race. A little while ago that you said that Stefanos was your pick overall at the meeting for Japan. Do you still believe that? Yes, still my first pick on Sunday is the Stefanos in the Cup. Stefanos finished second to Blazing Speed in the QE2, so which means you know Stefanos can handle this shutting racetrack very well. And his previous start, he was runner-up to Lovely Day in Tenno Show. Lovely Day is arguably the, one of the best, you know, Milan quarter horse in Japan right now. I think it was a very, very encouraging performance. And he has been trained beautifully. Um, Stefanos is enjoying Hong Kong very much. Yes. I believe you know he has a very good chance to win the cup on Sunday. Looking at the track work this week, a new record looked pretty good at the track. I am you know very impressed with the new new what record, the track work this morning. Um, definitely, she is enjoying Hong Kong. But uh, my assessment, you know, the new what record, I don't think you know she's so good horse as much as you know she's now. Is she now? third favorite or fourth favorite and the bookmakers in england oh i think you know her price is, doesn't look so attractive for me the one thing about stefanos is they came here ran in the qe2 cup they left here and said we're coming back in december so it has been a plan for stefanos and i think the gate looks a little bit awkward but he should get the pace required we we heard go to speak there of a new ovo record the four-year-old philly how do we assess her going into this race? I think she's probably got a little bit to find, but she's certainly on the, on the way up, John. Well, as a three-year-old, she won the Japanese Oak, so you can't uh, necessarily put a pen through her on the basis of that form. Uh, she's uh, done okay, though, in a couple of runs uh, leading up to this, and she looked quite good in the, in the track work that we saw uh, this morning. I think hopefully we'll be uh, uh, seeing a bit of her very shortly. Here she is, yet yeah, no of her record. has come from a long way off the pace here as well uh, to, uh, to get involved. And if they go a good gallop, uh, she'll definitely be suited uh, uh, by that. And as I said, a couple of second place finishes uh, both at group two and at group one level so she's not out of it but again I think she's possibly got to step up to be at the level of free eagle yeah I think she's got to step up too no doubt about that she was uh, two lengths behind lovely day so I sort of see her a length behind uh, or maybe two lengths behind uh, Stefanos uh, but at the end of the day uh, she will need to put in a, a career best performance let's uh, push on to uh, Lucia Valentina of course uh, from Australia she ran in the Epsom she ran in the Caulfield Cup she went back to her own sex to to win the matriarch she finished on the outside rail basically she is a a mare who's got a, a terrific turn of foot and Damien Oliver will be to, here to ride drawn well in gate number five. Yeah, that's a definite plus for her, but you probably know more about it than me, Brett, but I just think if you look at the level of form on show here, it's good, uh, no doubt about mm. it, but it's not really quite good enough, I think, to live with, with uh, top group one horses yet. Yeah, Criterion beat her by five in the, in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes at, uh, at Ramwick uh, some months ago, so I think she's really got a lift. She's got to run a best race of her career if she's going to feature in the top mm. probably half a dozen or so. Um, back to the local horses, of course, the local lead-up race, military attack and blazing speed. Blazing speed had to carry a fraction more weight on, uh, on this occasion and military attack was able to cut him down in the final stages. He certainly was. Military attack's been in good form uh, all season. There's no doubt about it. He was third in the Oriental Watch Shartin trophy off a big weight. That was a good effort. This was a really good effort to managing to get the better of blazing speed and overturning the placings from that race the previous year and he's drawn a terrific gate here, gate one. Uh, we were saying that Free Eagle doesn't matter where he's drawn but as far as this horse is concerned just to uh, maybe gain a yard or two on Free Eagle I think mm. uh, that gate one is going to be a big positive. I think he'll go well. And Beauty only just had his second run at 2,000 metres there. He continues to raise the uh, bar. He, he's really improving. He might not be a horse for the internationals this year, but you wait 12 mm. months. He definitely will be. Yeah, he's a, he's a very interesting runner. Fabulous race. Let's get the selections firstly from uh, John Blance in the Cup. John? Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to go with Free Eagle. I'm going to uh, stick with uh, my uh, European brethren here. I think he's got a very, very solid chance. Uh, the Prince of Wales' stakes was really good. The Grey Gatsby, the horse he beat there, is a, a bona fide Group 1 performer. Military attack, I think, uh, he was not necessarily going to go in the numbers, but 
but when he got gate one I thought yep I'll have him in and designs on Rome I take on board what John Moore has said there but I think there was enough promise in his first run to suggest he'll go well in defense of his crown. Sally Ann sounds like free eagle for you as well. Oh, I've put free eagle in second I, I designs on Roma I think it's brilliant to see so many of the past winners from last year back again and this yeah. year it gives great incentive uh, to, to people but um, designs on Rome I think the, the fact that he's coming back from an injury uh, from having surgery I think it still might mean he's a fresher horse than some of these horses that have been running against each other all year free eagle of course I'd love to see him win for Ireland it'd be great for us to have a win and criterion because I think he's better over here than he was than he showed in Europe yeah well we often talk about Abel friend as being the champion of Hong Kong but as a three-year-old designs on Rome had his measure on a number of occasions so he's an out-and-out -out champion in his own right designs on Rome I'm gonna go for the uh, the Japanese horse Stefanos to uh, to take the cup from designs on Rome and I'm very excited to see what Free Eagle can do. He is uh, a super animal, there's no doubt about that. Seven, one and two. So that's it, our preview is uh, done. Sally Ann, it's been great to have your company and hopefully you'll enjoy the day. Thank you very much, I'm sure we will. Hopefully there'll be a, a French or an Irish winner to cheer on. That'll be great. And John, uh, the weatherman suggests that it uh, might be a little bit overcast, but there'll be some sun about. Well, I hope he's more accurate than your famous weather app, that's all I can say, Brett. That's been, been uh, many, <laughs> many weeks ago, John. Thanks for joining us. We hope you find a winner and enjoy the 2015 Longines International Races from Sha Tin on Sunday.